So guys, I'm Mariana Chapman with Fine Family Farms and Eat Y'all. And you can see Chef Dwayne is here, um, proudly sporting his LSU cap again for this cooking class, <laughs> which I guess is fitting. <laughs> We're doing New Orleans stuff. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started, Dwayne. All Dwayne, right. So you're cooking from start to finish. From start to finish. And if you're at home cooking along, you can do this with you, right? Everybody yes, can. Yes, that, that you can. I would just say that if you do have any kids that you're cooking with, uh, kind of follow along with, be, uh, be mindful that the sugar will get hot. So please be careful um, from that standpoint. But other than that, it's a very quick and simple process. So we're going to just kind of dive right in. So. Uh, it's simple. Um, I already kind of got my ingredients already pre-scaled uh, out. So we have a cup of brown sugar and a cup of white sugar. That's just going to go into the pot. And then we're going to add a cup of heavy cream. All right. We're going to turn our heat on. I'm going to turn mine up to high. Um, the quicker, you know, this happens, the better. So. While this is kind of, you know, starting to warm up, I'm just going to try and stir it around, try and get everything nice and wet as it heats up. It definitely will all get incorporated. And then we're going to just let this go. We're going to cook this till it reaches 240 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is what we call um, soft ball stage. So at that point, the sugars will be then cooked to a point. If you took a little dab out and dropped it into some ice water, it would have the soft ball like texture. It's kind of one of those uh, cooking stages. So this soft ball, hard ball, hard crack, so typically like suckers, right? Those usually cook to like a hard ball or hard crack stage, right? So the higher you go, the brittle is also, but you know, that's pretty much in caramel form, but still, but the, you know, the higher you go, the harder the sugar gets um, when it's cooled. And so we're gonna kind of control this because we still want this to have, we want it to have some texture and to be somewhat um, firm, but we still want it to kind of almost melt on your tongue whenever you bite into it. So that's gonna allow us to get to that point. You definitely gonna wanna pull out your candy thermometers or um, I like to use this little digital thermometer. It's a life changer. I just set it to the temperature that I need it at. And then I'm gonna stick this probe in here once it gets going and then it's gonna beep at me whenever it's ready. So um, Pralines is one of my favorite candies. Um, this is definitely has a story with it. When I was growing up, um, we used to get 50 cents to get off the school bus and go see Miss Elaine Butler in the liquid neighborhood. She made the best pecan candy down in South Blackmas Parish. And it's definitely something that kind of, I mean, I can still taste it, you know, every time I pass by her, her home, make sure you rest in peace. She's gone now, but um, her son actually still makes her. It's a, however you want to pronounce that. Everybody has a different way to say it, um, but we like to just call it pecan candy. And so it's a really kind of rich dish. Um, you know, it's definitely a treat. Um, I would definitely say whenever you, um, tend to have them. I would, you know, one or two will definitely go a long way. Um, eat too many at one setting, you'll definitely come up with a stomach ache. But um, it's something that really just kind of speaks to speaks to my heart. So it was definitely something that's all around. Even to this day, um, the holidays, my um, my team Mona now makes it in our immediate family, and so she brings around tins to everyone um, for Christmas time. That's always our Christmas gift from from the Crumb family. So um, I mean, we still constantly eat these. They're a guarded possession in our household as well, too. Literally, like, she gives everyone individual containers because it's been known to start some, like, riffs with, you know, somebody hands ended up in your side, your bucket of, of the pecan candy. So I'm excited to do this one with you guys today. So as you can see, it's starting to get, you know, kind of got nice and wet and thin and syrupy, which is good. And so we're going to just kind of give that a stir. as making sure all of my little clumps and stuff were kind of broken up. And now we're going to just let the heat do what it do. So let's sit here. We'll let that kind of come to a ball. When it starts to come up to a bubble, you'll see it kind of happens if you're cooking along. Um, I'm gonna then toss in my thermometer. And at that stage, we'll just wash the temp just to make sure it gets the way it goes. So if anybody has any questions while we wait, now it's a good time to chat it up. All right, so we have quite a few people in the Zoom class. And if you are in the Zoom room, you can um, just message me in the chat. That's probably the easiest way or um, 
and just ask and I'll put you on live with Chef Dwayne if you want to ask any questions or you want to show us if you're cooking along and turn your camera on um, we could do that I see Mia says that she um, follows you on social media and asks a lot of baking questions and I know from following Dwayne as well that he is great about answering baking questions. He's, <laughs> he's really good at that and has some really good answers, and, which I think is why we have such a great class today because you give really good practical tips. And um, so if somebody wants to jump on and chat. Yes, come on in. Now's the time. Okay, so Tammy is asking about the shelf life of the candy and the best way to store them. The best way to store them is in an airtight container, just at room temperature, and they'll keep for about three weeks. So it has a pretty decent shelf life, to be honest about it. It's not something you have to worry about um, going bad in a couple of days. Um, after three weeks, though, what I talked happened, they'll just kind of start to get harder and harder. Eventually, the sugars will crystallize back together. And once that kind of happens, the taste will still be kind of, you know, will be good, but the texture will be quite different. Um, so then I think it's fun at that point to use them. I like to crumble them down and use them for garnish if there's any leftover or... Um, yeah, you know, just kind of add some, you know, different textures to different desserts and that kind of stuff. So they're also really good at that stage to fold them to vanilla ice cream. So if you ever have any of that around the house, um, that, that, you know, you got your own, own homemade, basically pecans and pralines at that time, so. Okay, so describe what we're seeing happen in the pot right now. If somebody has never cooked candy before, this is a normal look, correct? Yes, this is a very normal look. So basically what you see happening is just, you know, it, it's coming to a boil, right? Um, the texture, um, so it's not quite as loose, of course, as as um, as water balling, right? So basically, all the the moisture is kind of evaporating off, as you see throughout the steam. And so, what you're getting left is actually just the condensed syrupy syrupiness of the sugars. And like I said, it's hitting those different stages. For sugar, us thinking that sugar to be so simple because we use it almost in everything. It's a very complex um, ingredient. Um, you know, depending on humidity, depending on um, you know the moisture, um, whether it's brown sugar or that's my big. So we're gonna turn it off. Um, it can do a lot of different things. So once we hit our stage there, we're gonna um, turn the heat off at that point. And at that point, and we're gonna little add in our butter. I'm gonna add in the vanilla extract. And that's gonna bump up a little bit more when that alcohol from the vanilla extract hits it. So that don't, don't be alarmed. Just once again, just be careful. I'd like to give this just a second to, um, I would say maybe about a minute or so, just for that butter to start to melt. And it's gonna kind of cool down. And then eventually we're gonna stir it. We're gonna stir it until that butter is completely dissolved. And once it's dissolved, then we're gonna add in our pecans. And then we'll head over and, and we'll stir some more and we'll get ready to scoop them out. And that's, I mean, that is the whole process. It is such a simple, uh, a simple thing for it to be so yummy. Okay, so a few questions. Uh -huh. um, so Mildred is asking about stirring while the liquid is cooking. Yes or no? Um, no, while, once it starts coming to that ball, you wanna let it be because what you're gonna notice um, later on in the process, as we start to stir it, right? That's gonna cause air to get in, which cools it down. Um, which cause agitation eventually that, that sugar is going to then want to um, it's going to start to start to form um, you don't want to get any crystallization on the outside of your pot so that stirring process can harm that while it's actually coming up to a boil um, and it's hitting temperature we want to wait to force that crystallization to happen once the pecans are in um, because if a little bit of crystal um, crystallizes around the pot and that gets into your main caramel it's all eventually going to do the same thing and so it'll definitely throw, throw, throw the whole game off at that point but now that we've stopped we're gonna just stir that butter on in. Okay, and somebody asked to, a reminder how much butter? Um, that was two ounces of butter or a half a stick. Okay, salted or unsalted? Um, you know what? I will let that completely be your preference. So um, I used unsalted today, because that's what I had at home. Um, but uh, it would definitely be good, I think, with salted butter, because sometimes what I like to do, like especially during the, the holiday time, is add a little salt and clove and cinnamon to this mixture as well, um, mm -hmm. and a little cayenne pepper and kind of make a spice Carling candy, which is really nice. Mm. So there's your, there's a, there's a hot tip y'all. So um, Lori is asking about the type of pan that you use. Like, does it caramelize to the bottom? Do you need a heavy bottom on your pan? Is there a recommendation there? Um, you definitely want to have, a, you know, 
one of them, I would say heavy bottom pan. I mean, this one is just a nonstick pan. It's, um, it's just some cookware that I have at home, but you don't want anything that's really, really thin that you, it needs to be a good pan because you want that heat to heat evenly, right? Um, and you don't want it to, you know, get hot spots because once the caramel burns, there's nothing we can do about it at that point, but to unfortunately toss it out and start the process over. And if it burns enough, you'll never get it out the bottom of that pan. So it'll yeah. be put into the trash anyway. All right, so now that we're there, right, the school, the mixture stopped kind of bubbling. We've got that nice, pretty um, color and that syrup there. I'm gonna add in my toasted Georgia pecans that I've already got toasted up. I'm gonna just stir those in. And this is when the magic eventually will happen. So it just now is just a stirring game. So we can let this sit periodically, I would say maybe about the 36 to a minute time, but then you wanna kind of add it again. Once again, this is what a stirring needs to happen because this is gonna help one to cool it down and allow for those that crystallization process to start. So at this point, we're gonna head over to the, to the table area and we'll continue from there. Okay. All right, guys. So we're gonna we're gonna cut Dwayne's video for moments. And he is going to head across the room. And um, okay, so we have a few questions about um, toasting pecans. So we'll talk about that as soon as he gets back. Um, we had, let's see, some questions about spice. Um, so he mentioned some of the warming spices and even a little bit of cayenne. I'm sure he is happy to talk um, more about that. And Dwayne, I'm gonna need you to unmute yourself. All righty, okay. right, there we go. You're back. Awesome. And then, so several questions about the pecan. Um, uh -huh. Most importantly, are you pecan, pecan, or pecan? I'm a pecan fan, so I say pecan. I feel like we should have people from around the country get on here live just to say how they pronounce the word. But I, <laughs> I learned this week that I believe the official pronunciation is pecan. 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 And it, that makes it, sense. Interestingly, a word that is derived from the Native American language because it is our only tree nut in the U.S. that's native to the U.S. Well, I feel that would be very cool that we celebrate Thanksgiving. Pecan pie is a, an integral part of that feast and it, it really does have a lot of heritage to our country. So um, I also learned that pecans have more antioxidants um, than blueberries, weight to weight comparison and have tons of vitamins and minerals in them. And so I somehow feel a little better eating my pecan praline candy, knowing that I am boosting my immune system while I eat the candy. There you go, right? <laughs> you know, I always say, you know, if it tastes good, it's got to be good for you. I mean, that's just right? my mind. <laughs> I mean, however, you got to get those, get those vitamins and minerals into your body, you know? Like if I had <laughs> to eat the sugar to get to those antioxidants, I am down for that. <laughs> Well, and the good thing about this is that we're also using some brown sugar, which is technically less refined, you know what right. I mean? So it's a little bit more natural. Bit better food you know, I mean, we're doing what we can here. So I just want you guys to take a look at that there for a second and see how it's starting to kind of thicken up. And you can almost see where it's starting to lose a little bit of the glossiness. Um, you can kind of see like almost little ripples that's starting to form in it. So that's a good sign. That means that process is happening um, the way we want it to. And so the, what you want to do at this point, you just kind of want to just stir it until that starts to happen. Eventually, um, we're going to kind of get to that consistency where it's going to hold the shape. And when I say that, meaning that as we scoop it and it starts to kind of mellow itself out, it'll be firm enough at that point to kind of won't just run all over the table. It's going to hold that nice little round shape um, that you see um, when you think of like the traditional pecan problem. And so mine is almost about there. And the good thing about this, you can always kind of give yourself a little test run just to see, you know, um, so you can spoon them out if you would like. Um, I have my little handy scoop here, so I'm gonna scoop mine. Um, and I'm doing this onto um, a silk pad or silicone mat, right? Um, but you can use caution paper, um, you know, um, uh, nonstick cookie sheet, 
any of those things would work, you know, just want to make sure that it is, you know, that is nonstick. So you don't have to scrape at it when it's time to lift. But there's enough fat in there and stuff that honestly, once it cools properly, it should just release itself right on up for the most part. All right. So I have some good, you can see how thick that's now starting to happen. So this is definitely to that stage where I want to start to scoop these out. And I'm going to just give myself another, be perfect, you know what I mean? Just something there. Look at that. And as you can see, the kind of bellows out just a little bit, but it's going to just hold that, hold that shape. So now I can just kind of keep going. I feel like you just gave me the I told you so I. <laughs> I I said, Dwayne, are you going to pre-make the praline so you have some to show? And he said, no, I'm good. They're going to be great. <laughs> I've definitely done these a time or two before. Matter of fact, um, I think the last time that I came down for Swedish Chef of the South, this was my demo. And I think we did, what, 150 to 200 of them. So um, it's definitely something that uh, I've got a little practice with. Yeah. <laughs> So for those of you who may be new to um, new to us, we have an event every fall. It got canceled this year, unfortunately, but we'll be back next year called Sweetest Chefs. And Dwayne has participated all but one the very first year. So this next time will be the sixth annual event. It will be in Orange Beach, Alabama in September next year. It's a really cool destination event. We have a big pastry chef showcase and cooking demonstrations and just all sorts of fun things. So that's a fun thing to watch out for. And Dwayne is pretty much always there and adds a lot of fun to the event every year. And so um, let's see, gosh, we've got a lot of comments here. Okay, so Nicole is asking if the pecans can be inserted raw into the candy or do we need to toast them? Um, you can insert them raw. They don't have to be toasted, uh, but the toasting of them just really brings out all of those oils and flavor from the pecan. And so I feel like it gives it a better taste profile in the end. But by all means, if you're not a big fan of toasted nuts, then you can definitely, um, you can definitely add them in raw. And I think um, the Georgia pecans have a great high oil content. It's part of what makes them so healthy and so tasty. They have a, a really buttery um, tender meat, um, buttery flavor, Swedish sweet flavor. Um, and I think toasting them really highlights that flavor, which is a great compliment to the candy. I totally, totally agree. I mean, cause like you're really going to notice a difference, um, because the heat, you know, so flavors transfer better through, throughout heat, right? That's one of the ways that we infuse flavors together. So because that sugar is so hot and all of those oils have kind of been brought to the surface of that of that pecan, whenever they mix together, it really just broadcast, for lack of a better word, like all throughout the, the sugar. So each, you don't just wait till you get to a pecan to get the pecan flavor. Each bite will then kind of resonate that flavor through, which is really nice. Oh gosh, I'm kind of having an epiphany about that. So basically it's it's like an essential oil of the nut and that, that pecan flavor is just melding through the sugar mixture. That's because we roasted them. That is okay. correct. I never thought about it that way. That is correct, yeah. So magically, okay, in the span of 20 minutes, y'all, okay, check your clocks here. Dwayne just made a batch of pecan pralines, which could be really dangerous for the waistline. If, <laughs> all, the, if all of us can, can mimic your, your situation here, uh, it's gonna be a really good Thanksgiving. It really, really will be. <laughs> So now this is unfortunately the um, the hardest part of this whole gig is now waiting for them to set, right? So I'm um, depending on the temperature in your home um, that could take anywhere from 20 minutes um, up to possibly two hours, right? Um, but the longer they go, about that two hour mark though is gonna be, you know, kind of that perfect texture, you know, texture of it. So um, after about 20 minutes, it's still gonna be a little bit softer than what you would probably would think of somewhere around, you know, like I said, that two hour mark, there'll be that, that perfect kind of texture where it's still gonna kind of melt on your tongue, um, but it will have the smallest amount of, I hate to use the word crunch, cause they don't really crunch, the pecans themselves crunch, but not the actual candy, if that makes any sense. Um, but it will have like a, a, a small snap to it, right? You know, you could take it and cut them in half with the knife at that point is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay, so we do have quite a few questions or yes. comments that have come through and you are also, you have another another fun demonstration or thing you're gonna share with us as we get going here? 
I do, I do. Because, you know, sometimes I think that we tend to think things just very one dimensional. Um, and I think that this candy to me is so versatile and it allows you to kind of um, really play up um, other aspects of the dessert world. So most of my career, what I've been is actual restaurant pastry chef, which means that I've been completely focused on plated desserts. Basically, we take a bunch of different components and we try, you know, to make a well cohesive dish to present. And so um, every time I eat one of these two, I always think about, um, you know, my, my grandfather, his favorite cake in the world is German chocolate cake, right? And so, um, and what you think about, you know, it's funny because I do not like German chocolate cake, can't stand it because I'm not a big fan of coconut, right? Love the flavor of coconut, but I don't like the texture. So it, this allows me a chance to be able to kind of still somewhat get those flavor profiles of it. Um, but then whenever I'm eating it myself, I can just push the coconut pieces to the side and kind of go from there. So I'll show you what I did. Um, and so basically what I've done is I have made kind of a deconstructed in a sense German chocolate cake. So there's some just ch dark chocolate ganache. I chose a dark chocolate on here um, just because you want some of that bitterness to kind of combat all the sweetness from the praline and then from the cake and from the mousse. Um, there's some milk chocolate mousse underneath. Um, there's some chocolate cake there. Of course, I took some pralines that I had earlier um, and I just chopped up to little cubes and placed them because this adds a different texture to the plate. So that way everything is not just so soggy. There's some whipped cream and then there's toasted coconut sprinkled right on top with some cocoa nibs to add a little bit more of that bitter flavor. And I finished them off with some candied pecans, some of the whole pecan halves. And that gives a really nice touch. And that's also a really nice, new, neat way to also have your pecans if you're having one of them just for a snack. I love just candy nuts. And so those are one of the things. So you can also make a nice, beautiful plate of dessert with it as well. Nice. Okay, you can leave that in the frame so we can all be hungry. Yes. <laughs> Am I getting a good angle of it? Um, pull it a little more towards you. Yeah. All right. That's amazing. So those look like thicker praline pieces yeah. than what you did there. Explain exactly. That. Because yeah, you don't have to always just put them um, into scoop form. So like I said, we had pecan candy, basically was just laid out thin onto a sheet tray or to a bacon, square bacon pan, and then squares were cut from it. So they can be a little bit thicker, right? You can, you know, just of course, the thicker they are, the longer they take to cool down properly. So you make sure you give yourself enough time in order for them to set properly. But you can, um, yeah, you can just put them into a long pan. Um, if you, excuse me, <laughs> sorry. Um, you can also take um, and use like the silicone modes, um, like the little square rectangle ones or the funny shape, you know, or the round, however shape you have, you can place them in that too, let them set up so you can have different shapes of them. Um, so it's, it's, a very, it's a very fun dish to kind of work with because you can, you know, you can do so much with it. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I never really thought about it, but then when we were talking the other day, you were kind of, we were talking about this plated dish and using them just as a topping or compliment in other dishes and, um, and similarly the candy pecan. So I'm gonna start through some of these questions. And I yes. think one of them was about um, how do you like to do your candy pecan? So maybe just um, y'all, I happen to know that he's, Dwayne is brilliant at using ingredients that we all have in our kitchens. If you are any sort of home cook, um, and just really practical, delicious flavors that resonate and, and give us a lot of comfort and happy feelings. So what are, what are some ideas for candying our pecans and how do you do it? What's, what's your method? It is a very simple process. It is literally only sugar and water. That's the way I do mine. I know some people like to toss them in egg whites and, you know, and they roast them. That, that, that's wonderful. There's nothing, but that gets very complex for me. And I'm also probably, it's funny, considering I'm a pastry chef and my job is to be meticulous, but I'm also probably the biggest space cadet you will meet on the planet. And so me at home with something as delicate as like nuts roasting in the oven to candy, um, they would be burned every time because I would completely forget about them because, you know, this is us is on TV or something. So, I, um, so what I simply do is I add, um, I add some sugar, you know, of course you want to think about it. In the, in the amount of how much you're going to candy, right? Um, so for instance, I did maybe like a small handful. So I would say I went with like an eighth of a cup of sugar. Of course, I just eyeball this, but basically you wanted to add enough water to it till it's wet sand consistency, all right? Okay. Um, and so when you think about being at the beach and you know, that wave comes up and you have the sandwich kind of pick up, it's like, it's, it's damp, 
but it's almost still like if you kind of break it apart, it dries out, right? So that's kind of what we're looking for. Literally just put it on the stove and turn it up. And once again, what you're looking for is for that sugar to hit that softball stage, right? For it to start to bubble. So you'll notice when you first turn it on when it comes to a boil, it's gonna look um, watery. Eventually that water will evaporate off and it will look syrupy, but you still want it to be clear. At that point, you just dump your nuts in there and you just stir it until that crystallization process happens. Eventually you'll, they're gonna stick together and be all white and clear. And then eventually what's gonna happen, you're gonna see them start to come apart and you'll see a white residue start to form around your pan. And that and they'll of course also form around the nut. And then they're good to go. At that point, when that starts to happen, you can then add a little salt to them. Um, I've seen some, once again, people add some different spices, um, you know, but I like mine just plain old sugar. And so just sugar and water and just let, let them go from there. So white sugar, brown sugar? White sugar. Okay. Yes. Right. So once again, you know, brown sugar still has the natural molasses left into it. Um, and so that's an invert. So molasses, corn syrup, those things that we call invert sugars, right? So they're actually meant to stop the crystallation process, right? Oh. So for instance, so like whenever we make, um, so when we make ice cream, right, we add a little bit of corn syrup or either some people use glucose, right, to, to the base. And so as it's spinning, it helps the sugar not to form those ice crystals and crystallize. So brown sugar, unfortunately, would do quite the opposite that you wanted to do in a sense of candy and the nuts. Interesting. Food science, I did not know. <laughs> Love that. Okay, so candy pecans, and then what um, what spices or flavors might you add? And so you said add the spice maybe at the very end. Is what other fun tricks for candied nuts? Can you you know just brainstorm in here, Dwayne? Ah, oh, just brainstorm. So um, you know I think like I said I love to have heat with my dessert sometimes, right? So once again, um, I think you know um, I, I love that idea of the cayenne pepper. Um, also black pepper because it will kind of the toastiness of that will kind of give you that smokiness which is really cool and so you'll get this peppery taste without but you won't quite so much get the heat that you would from a cayenne but you'll get this really smokiness that's really fun way I think to add um add them to the nuts and um you know if I'm going with an odd one you know I would maybe even I, I would like to I haven't tried it yet I would be careful with it but maybe even like ground ginger would be fun right mm -hmm. um just you know with ginger it's the more you cook it, the more it, like it almost becomes bitter. So I would just definitely be careful with that one. Um, and, and a little bit goes a long way. And I haven't tried it yet, so I can't give you an exact, you know, a pinpoint direction on that one. But that would probably be fun as well too. I think some ground ginger would be nice. Okay, so here is this is a very chefy question. We deal in this in this realm a lot with chefs. So I think you will agree. Better ingredients are important to better outcomes in your food, right? You, it all starts with the better ingredient. Absolutely agree. So speak to that when it comes to, I mean, really all of the ingredients you have here, but especially the pecan is a, a central piece of this candy and butter. I mean, good quality butter makes a difference in how things work. Um, and I know people have asked questions about that in other classes. What butter do you use? Does it really matter if I use heavy cream? Can I just use whole fat milk? Um, to speak about better ingredients, you know, and especially the Georgia pecan. Of course, we really prefer that most, I think, 100% of chefs we've put the Georgia pecan in front of or just in love it's it's not the same flavor that you experience out of a, a commodity bag from the um, food service distributor so speak it's, to just the, the practice of buying better ingredients to get a better a better outcome even in our home kitchens yes no i, I definitely support that 110 percent um and simply because let's take the georgia pecan for instance right so what we love i know i just moved this out, out of the way for just a second um we'll stop uh, so what, yeah. <laughs> take a so break what we you know what we love about it is that you know the texture on it it's far superior um the oil qualities right it's far superior and once again like i was saying so you know I've said this many times in the past, once again, fat is flavor, right? So if this has a higher oil content and a better oil content, that's better flavor that's coming through. We shouldn't be eating things simply because they should taste good, right? Like, I mean, like, that's my whole thing. I, you know, like, I've always been on this whole journey 
is like, you know, you'll learn some really cool techniques along the way, um, especially in, in, in the pastry world. There's always someone trying to add in a new chemical to something to make something look cool or seem fun or all that stuff. But then when you taste it, you can truly taste the difference. So I am a firm believer that if you're going to eat it, it should taste good. And so we know that the pecan is far, you know, far better um, than all of its counterparts out there. So it definitely makes sense to add it because it's going to just give you more of a natural uh, just a natural better taste. I also think that it still, it connects us back to the way that things were done in our past. Um, and I think that's why our grandparents' food tastes so good. I think that's why their parents' food tastes so good because there was a time where they was truly getting things in the right time of year from the right source and at the height of its, you know, of its, at the peak, you know, of its freshness. And there wasn't so many chemicals and storages and, you know, and all these things just sitting on shelves for months or in warehouses. So if we really want to get back to the point of, of connecting with those memories and really tasting, um, tasting those memories, as I like to say, then we have to cook the same way. And so I'm a firm believer in trying to purchase the best ingredients that you can in order to, to do what you do. Nice. And I think we've got a couple of links here in the chat and we'll share these on Facebook also, but um, Georgia Pecan Growers Association is our partner for today. And just quickly mention, they've got a link on our chat here on Zoom. We'll post it over on Facebook where you can find um, farmers to buy from directly. And we also have a link on Fine Family Farms. Oh, is it time? It we have a time. link to Fine Family Farms um, where we have halves and pieces um, available for sale as well that'll ship straight from the farm. So to that freshness point. Hey, what did we use in these? Were these pieces or were they full halves? No, they were full halves. I just chopped them myself um, okay. in order to make the, the, the pieces, but they were full halves. Okay. So something that's kind of cool that I didn't really know about the pecan ingredient world, but you can buy them, the, the shellers process into small pieces, medium pieces, large pieces, and halves. And so depending on what you're making, you can actually pre-buy fresh pecans that way. Okay, so they're ready? They are ready. So I'm going to hold this up pretty close so you can see. So you can see how there, there's um, little white spots, I guess, for a lack of better terms in it, like kind of little, they're very, like you can see where the crystallization is happening. So that's usually a good indication that, um, that you know they're firm enough for you to lift up. Like I said, so at this point, they're still gonna be somewhat soft, right? Cause I can still feel the warmth coming from the bottom of it. They're not completely cooled down, but they are definitely, I mean, they're definitely edible. And you can see what I meant by I said, where there should be some give and snap, but yet you still have that nice buttery just texture in the inside that's gonna just kind of melt as it hits your tongue. And I'm gonna be in trouble by the time this evening is over with. So I love these things. Oh, I cannot wait to get home and cook these. I'm super <laughs> excited. Oh my goodness, the questions. So many, so many, so many. Okay, you ready? Uh-huh. All right, let's, let's dive in. Of course, there's the, um, the carb craving um, satisfaction going on here. Lots of people are oohing and aahing um, and going crazy. I'm going to have to back way up. Um, thank you, Robin. <laughs> Pecans are the tastiest nuts of all. Nothing can compare to them. We, we agree, <laughs> obviously. We agree. Um, let's see. Okay, then about toasting. So let's go back kind of early in the process. Um, we have several questions about the toasting process. So one is, do you toast um, before or after you chop? Or do you chop before and after you toast, depending on how you want to toast it? I personally like to chop and then toast if I'm okay. chopping them, right? I mean, if I need them uh, half, then there's no need to, to do that. Um, and I don't, personally, I, I don't think that that makes a big difference in my personal experience. Um, if someone out there thinks that that is, you know, that's off, just let me know. But personally, I don't think it makes a big difference whether you toast them whole or you toast them in pieces. Um, but I would just say that if you're gonna toast them whole, of course, just don't overcrowd your pan, right? Make sure there's enough surface areas, you know, enough space to cover all that surface area. So as you're toasting them, um, you know, everything kind of gets toasted. I did mine um, in the oven for like five uh, minute increments and I have to keep checking it. Once again, I told you if I sit still for too long, I kind of forget things are going on. And um, so that way I didn't burn them, but um, they can also be toasted on, this, on the top of the stove in a skillet. Um, I would say with a medium to low heat, right? Something you can control very well and just kind of toss them every now and then, but you can definitely also toast them right on top of the stove as well. Okay, so what is the sign that they're done? When you can smell them, okay. right? So the minute that aromas are coming out, 
right? You, you are to that point. Now, once again, um, with anything, the further you go, um, you know, eventually the more bitter they will become because you're going to basically extract all of those flavors right on out. So I would say um, once you smell them, um, you know, then, then you're, at, you're at a good point. If you want a little bit of color on them, I like mine to have a little bit of color. Um, and once again, for this particular process, I take them a little bit darker for my purposes, just because to combat all of the brown sugar and sugar that's in this dish, it's nice to kind of, you know, have just a little bit of a flavor variance. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to go too far because once again, once they become too dark, then, you know, then you, you ruin such a beautiful product. But once you start to smell them, it's usually a good sign, an indicator that you've extracted the oils from them. They're, you know, you are releasing the aromas and the flavors and the oils are warming up and you're good to go at that point. Nice, nice. And then if you're roasting in the oven, what temperature do you do them on? Um, I did mine today at 350. But like I said, you know, just keep an eye on it. And it's nice to kind of toss them around, rotate okay. your pans, you know, just kind of keep them moving a little bit. So that way, um, you know, depending on how your oven cooks, you could have hot spots in there where the heat is concentrated in one area. So I always try and kind of toss them around and then, you know, I rotate my pans as well. I think understanding why we toast them and what what result you get really makes it make more sense why you toss them. You're, you're trying to get the whole surface area warm. So the whole surface area of the nut starts to, to ooze that in, in that microscopic way, ooze those tasty oils. That's out correct. a little so that it can so you get your maximum flavor for your praline and any candy or your candy mm -hmm. pecans or whatever when you you get that full surface area exposed so for those of you who are watching that were just like toasted pecans blah 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 I think that's that's interesting that you you do want that full surface area and you don't want them to get yucky and um so there's, there's a purpose behind it I guess that's, that's there really is. helpful to the flavor so hopefully that'll help a few people. Let's see. Um, so a lot, that was a big chunk of questions related to the toasting. Um, and then quite a few people have asked about um, flavorings that are alcoholic. So, and how that affects the, particularly bourbon. Of course, you put a little vanilla extract and that by, it has an alcohol base. So right. how do you think that affects candy and particularly the praline? Um. I would say that you would be okay to add a little bit in. Just be mindful not to add too much liquid that is going to throw off. That's going to throw off the, the what is the word I'm looking for? Um, the consistency, right? Um, so remember, baking is a science, and if they get if we put two cups of cream to that, then it would never come together, right? So, um, so what I would recommend doing is so um, maybe you know finding yourself a really good bourbon that you like. Um, and just add in, I would say you could probably add in maybe up to maybe a tablespoon or two to that recipe that we just had, and you should be good to go. Just remember though that because it cooked at such a high heat, it's gonna cook off all of the alcohol, but you should get some of that bourbon flavor that'll be left behind. Okay. And um, Robin asked if you've ever used it to already um, roasted and salted pecans. Like just skip the toast process and buy the already salted roasted. Does that is it too salty? Um, I have never used those um, because I've always been in a setting to where we just had. You know, so back at home, we would get just the whole. Everybody should have to crack the shells and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and break them open. Um, and then you know when I was even in, in the, the kitchens, you know, chefs try their best to buy things as cheap as possible. Let's be real about it. So the more process, the more handling that's done of them. Um, the more expensive they tend to cost. So we would get them and, you know, I was lucky enough to at least get them shelled in half, right? Uh, um, so I've always had to just chop them down and, and, and go from myself. What I would say is, though, if you're going to use one that's salted already, um, you know, just taste your nut, right? And, and if you feel like the nut itself is like, if you had a handful of those, you felt like that would be too salty, then it's probably going to translate as being too salty inside of your dish. So um, I would say, there's not really a way to combat that, um, unfortunately, once you, if you're gonna go that route. So just be mindful of, um, just be mindful of how much salt is on that nut, on the nut already. Um, and I would kind of just have, you have to judge yourself with taste on that one. Okay, and then um, we actually had somebody ask, I know you're a pastry chef, which equals specializes in breads and delicious sweet things. Um, but do you have any recommendations for using the George pecans in savory dishes? Yes. Yeah. So um, there's this dish that's called, um, 
it's called trout almondine, but I like to actually take the almonds out and use toasted pecans in that. And it's like you get the brown butter in those toasted pecans. And I think that's a wonderful um, way to have it. As well as I also really do like them on salads um, and even candied in that candied version, right? You can still candy them like that and it gives a sweet and this, this beautiful nuttiness to a, to a salad. And that's definitely a couple ways that I enjoy having them in a savory world. Um, but I would also say too, you can also, you know, in pastry wise, we, we can make them into a crust um, for a pie. So if you just remove the amount of sugar that you would add to that and just go with a little bit more of like a flour mixture, maybe just a little bit of binding, a little sugar to bind it together. I think it would be something beautiful to roll something in and crush it, possibly even deep fry would probably even be interesting as well too. Yeah, we, um, one of our favorite things to do is use pecan flour or pecan meal. So it's like a coarse ground flour, I guess, of the, mm -hmm. the pecan meat and crust meat, especially chicken. And it's it's kind of a an ingenious way to fry chicken without See? the chicken stay super juicy and delicious and you get a nice crust. And for those of us who didn't grow up frying a lot of things and are, are just deficient in that skill set, we <laughs> found at our house that can be really delicious and the kids like it a lot too. And again, you're cheating and putting a little nutrition on the, the breading of your, of your chicken. chicken which is brilliant. <laughs> the kids right? don't even know they're getting, getting some bonus antioxidants, right? <laughs> so, that's kind of funny. Um, okay, so Mildred asked how big of a batch you can cook at a time. And I think she's talking about the pralines in particular. I, not, I don't think we were yet talking about the candy pecans when she said that. So how big of a batch of pralines? Like, can she double the recipe you sent? You how can far can she go? You can definitely double it, triple it. Um, I think I've made enough at one point to do somewhere around 200 or so of them out of it, out of a bat. So it's really just a matter of you having arm strength. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? To like kind of keep going. So um, the good thing about it, and what I would recommend doing though, is that if you are going to, if you're going to really mass produce it, um, I would I would get a weight for those ingredients. So. For instance, the good thing about the sugar is that actually all of the sugar, the sugar, the brown sugar, as well as, um, as well as the heavy cream, you can go one cup to eight ounces, right? But um, so I would just go at that point, you know, and kind of start to weigh things out because sometimes, you know, not all of these uh, dry measuring cups and stuff are quite the same. And so if you just start scooping up cups and cups, if that's off a little bit, eventually if you get to a back batch, you can all of a sudden be very off on your ratios. So I would just be mindful of that. But other than that, no, you, um, you can definitely double it, triple it up, you know, um, make as many as, as you would like. And you don't have to scoop them so small either. Like I said, that's just, I just like them to be a little bite sized because I'm already gonna eat more than these than I should. And if I have them too big and I just hurt myself. So, but you can also, you know, make them bigger as well too that was something I didn't know for a long time was about the weighing. And that's, that's the reality of the difference between a pastry chef kitchen and a home cook kitchen is the weighing. Yes. Right. But yeah, it, we it's because everything. you're doing bigger batches and so the ratios get off ultimately. Correct. You know, cause you know, cause what people think is like, what you don't realize is for instance, one cup of flour is not eight ounces. It's actually only like five and a half ounces. Um, a cup of powdered sugar is only like four ounces. So it's almost half of it. So whenever you just start scooping away, like, oh, you know, it just, it changes the game of things. And then, like I said, you know, my measuring cup may, you know, may be a little wider. And so for some reason that surface area is just a little bit off. And, you know, when you start to multiply in big numbers as sometimes when I was in some of these big hotels and casinos and stuff that we were doing, it, it all of a sudden that kind of kept up, catches up with you. Now, if you're just doubling or tripling it, then you should be good to go either way. Okay. And then Mildred asked, um, is it better to use light or dark sugar in the praline, the brown sugar? Um, you know what? That's completely um, a, a preference. Um, either way it goes, it will not matter. Um, so I used light brown sugar today because that's what I had available um, in my in my fridge, but I've also done it with dark brown sugar. Um, and because the, the flavor of the pecan is so strong, you, you won't really notice it. If you took the pecans out, you would notice a difference between the dark and the brown sugar. But with the pecans there, I don't think you're really going to notice that much. So you can definitely go either or. Okay. And then um, Brenda asked if you could incorporate chocolate into the praline recipe and what would happen if you did that? Well, you know, if you actually add chocolate into it, you're then getting to what we call fudge. I mean, so, you know, fudge <laughs> for the most, 
Well, you know, so actual fudge is really just cooked sugar, right? That then has chocolate that's stirred into it and it sets and it crystallizes. So you would end up with, with a, a, a kind of like a fudge process, pro product um, in the end. So, so chocolate pecan fudge at that point. At that point, yeah. All right. And let's see. Um, Anne just commented that pecans go very good with a bourbon cocktail. And I um, do concur with that. Um, Ken on Facebook asks, um, what about pecans with maple syrup? So I'm not sure the complete context. So I'm guessing we were talking about candied pecans and is there a possibility of doing some sort of maple glazed pecan and how would you do that? Um, that would definitely go well together. Um, and you know, spending a lot of time, I went to culinary school in Vermont, and it's like the land of maple syrup. And I mean, they put it on almost anything and everything. Um, so yeah, and when you think about it too, um, actually when I, we would have uh, sweet potatoes, right? And then we'd make a maple glaze sometimes to go over that. And so what I would do is just kind of um, take your syrup, I mean, your, your actual maple syrup, and really, you would just kind of cook it down a little bit. Be careful, of course, not to burn it. Um, and then I would say just toss. So once again, I would toast my nuts first. I would kind of get that syrup going. I would just kind of toss them around lightly and then maybe finish with a little bit of butter just to kind of get it to keep that glaziness. Um, and then I would you, you would probably can just let them go from there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, the only thing is, I don't know how that would, uh, eventually the nut, I think, would suck up that moisture. So I think it would definitely one of the things you kind of want to, eat in the moment, more or less. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how well it would hold over to stick. Um, and I've never tried to actually use maple syrup all the way. Oh, well, I mean, why not just take the syrup and see if you can't candy the nut completely, right? I would think with it being from sap, it should crystallize at some point if you evaporate it enough. So that may be a fun way too, to actually candy the nut as well. So do that yeah. same process, but use maple syrup instead and, and see what happens. If anybody does that, let me know if that works. All right, Ken on Facebook, you're up. This is, we're, we're, we're counting on you to test it out and let us know how it goes. And Dwayne does have a great Facebook page and Instagram. Are you, you're more on Instagram personally, right? I am more on Instagram. Yes. All right. So if you want to really chat with Dwayne, Instagram, <laughs> your spot. So if you need backup, Ken, head over to Instagram. All right. So Mia is asking about mailing the praline. So you make the praline, they harden up. And instead of eating them all yourself, she's wondering about tips for packing and shipping them. I'm guessing she's gonna be generous and share at least half the platter with someone else. Well, that was really, really sweet of her. Yes. I no, know, I'm, she's a better you know, person than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so we would, I was always coming to those, remember those cookie tins that you start the butter cookies in them in the different sections. So <laughs> for some reason, my family has hoarded those over all these years. And so we always just put some in there, right? But you can easily just then mail that container would be fine, stacking them up in there. Um, or probably a nice Tupperware, you know, just something that has a seal, just something airtight. Um, the good thing about it is that once again, as they really start to kind of sit around and cool, I mean, even now I'm gonna just, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty solid. So, you know, sometimes the milk can just get tossed around a little bit. So as long as they're packed nice and tight in the airtight container, they should be fine to, to ship anywhere. Yeah, Andy and I were talking yesterday about um, candy packing, just using tissue paper to kind mm -hmm. of push it Soften. down in there, so it kind of holds them and they don't they don't beat around quite as much. Yeah, sing around. Yeah, that would work well. But yeah, okay. So Mia, actually, you were talking about the maple syrup, and she has had success doing that with honey. Doing the candy. look at that. Yes, I'm gonna try that next time. Thanks, Mia. All right. So, okay, Kathy, do we have any more questions from Facebook? We're getting down to our last few minutes here. Anybody else in the in the Zoom call that has any questions? I'm not. Oh, let's see, Tammy, parchment paper with bubble wrap is great for shipping. Okay. That we got our got our answer there. Tips. Okay. Well, Dwayne, don't eat them all in the next five minutes. Try to. I'm, I'm going to try and you put some self-control on and uh, that's why I'm trying to package them away right now as we speak. So that way um, I'm going to actually take, I'm gonna take some, uh, take a few of them to work tomorrow too for the guys at work. All right, come on in here. Well, Dwayne, you look good on Facebook. Hey, what's going on, Miss Andy? <laughs> Sorry I wasn't here to, uh, to coach you up, but uh, 
from what I could tell you, you nailed it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I can always use a little help though. Well, we, um, Andy, Andy's been touring the pecan farms today. So everybody who's watching, if you're interested in how the pecans are grown, literally, we'll be posting that on our social media over the next couple of days. We'll also get the recording of this up um, on our YouTube and Facebook again. So um, anybody who needs to go back and can't remember that tip Dwayne shared, um, that'll be up there in a, a few days. And again, just super thanks to the Georgia Pecan Growers Association for helping make this possible and to their growers for growing one really amazing product that has has lots of lots of good uses and chief among them this time of year is this delicious pecan praline candy. So, um, and Dwayne, thank you for doing this. Thanks for taking yeah, the time to time. come on and share your magic tricks with us. And um, <laughs> and Lori says thank you, Georgia pecan growers, also um, for the wonderful event and um, lots of lots of kind comments here um, from Brandy, Nicole, Lori, Mildred, um, lots of lots of folks from all over the country tuning in. So thank you all. Dwayne will be back in December. We'll post the date soon with a, another cooking class just before Christmas. So if you're watching um, tonight and want to do more of this, we'll we'll be doing another one, right, Dwayne? Yes, we will be. <laughs> all right. We don't know what yet, but. But we're coming in, coming in December, and uh, we'll have some great, great recipes for you then. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Stay safe, be healthy, and um, eat some good pecan pralines um, with those Georgia pecans available at, um, I believe it's georgiapecan.org, georgiapecan.org, and findfamilyfarms.com also has halves and pieces available for sale if you need a source for these delicious products, so. All right. We'll see you next month, Dwayne. See you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye,